If you have used Stingray in conjunction with 3ds Max in the past, you may have been surprised at how 3ds Max materials carry over. At times, you find yourself missing bitmaps or sometimes complete material definitions. Let's explore these situations using the simple scene named peerstart.max showing a section of a peer. This scene is available for download using the link found in this movie description section. The idea is to prep a scene in 3ds Max so that when exported to Stingray, all transferred materials appear exactly as they should in Stingray. This includes all properly defined channels such as maps for color, normal, and roughness characteristics among others. Also, an animated material should transfer properly so that it can be viewed in real time in Stingray. At this time, a default light gray material is applied to all objects in the 3ds Max scene. The objects themselves are pretty straightforward, mostly primitives and extruded shapes that have been manipulated using standard 3ds Max commands. All objects have been unwrapped and converted to editable polys. An Omni light has been added as a light source on top of the lamppost. When you consider building materials for a scene, your workflow is often dictated by your personal choices as well as the rendering engine you use. However, if your goal is to output the scene to Stingray, then you need to be careful in planning your materials. Material types like arc and design and physical materials do not carry over too well. The scanline standard material works up to a point, but you will inevitably have to make corrections in Stingray. The best way is to work with DirectX shaders, which work the same way in 3ds Max and in Stingray. Let's experiment a bit. Select all objects and shift move them to the side to create a copy. You'll be creating two sets of materials, one based on the scanline standard material, the other on the newer physical material type. This will give you a good idea of what to expect when you go into Stingray. We'll play with the DirectX shader a little later. Press M to go to the Slate Material Editor. There's a number of PBR bitmaps shown as nodes. These were generated to cater for normal, roughness, and occlusion maps, among others, as BFIT's physically based rendering textures. I'll discuss these and how they were created in a follow-up movie in this tutorial series. For now, let us create a physical material and a standard material and hook these textures to them. Start with the physical material. Create a new one in the editor and rename it peer underscore pm PM for physical material. Hook the color image to its base color map and apply it to the first dock. You can also apply it to the lamppost, but not to the globe itself. This requires a different material. You also want to set this material to realistic display in the viewport. That's the second icon in the flyout. Next, drag the normal map's output and add a normal bump map and hook that to the material's bump channel. Ultimately, you want to hook the specular map to the reflectivity channel and also the roughness and metal maps to their respective channels as well. You can even use the roughness map in the reflection color map channel as well. Note that there is no channel for the ambient occlusion map, so we'll leave that alone for now. Next, create a standard material and repeat the exercise. Using all textures except the metal and emulate occlusion maps. Rename the material peer SM, SM for standard material. Apply the new material to the second dock and make it visible in the viewport. At this point, the two docks seem fairly identical. Let's see how they translate to Stingray. Start Stingray and create a new basic project. Choose a folder for it. In my case, I have a folder named Stingray Projects on my D drive. I'll just create a subfolder named DX Shader in it. Add 
Give your project a name, such as peer test, and place it in your working folder. Go back to 3ds Max and select the first dock with the physical material applied. Select the components that make the dock. You don't need the lampposts for now. Using the Stingray menu, choose Send Selection. You are prompted to save an FBX file in the Stingray project folder. I usually like to save 3ds Max assets in the Contents subfolder. Name the file docpm and click Save. When prompted, choose the options you want to use. I personally like to organize materials and textures in their own folders. Click the Import button when done. Repeat the procedure for the second dock, the one with the standard material. Name it Dock SM. Back in Stingray, go to the Content folder and drag the two docks into the scene. Zero out their positions so they appear in the same spot as they were in 3ds Max. Note that the first dock with the physical material applied didn't convert too well at all as none of the bitmaps are visible. If you select it and go to its material resource, PRPM, you'll notice that it was converted into a Stingray shader. The conversion, however, did not take into account the various bitmaps that define the physical material, so you would need to redefine these in Stingray. That's a bit of a redundancy. Now select the dock with the standard material, PRSM, and go to its material resource. It too was converted into a Stingray shader, but only the base color and the normal map came through. Again, Additional work is required in Stingray to redefine the shader the way it was set in 3ds Max. For one-to-one -one seamless interoperability, it is best to build your Stingray shaders in 3ds Max to make sure that any conversion is totally flawless. This is what you learn to do next.